Hey friends, I think we can all agree that compared to a decade ago, creating data-backed websites hosted in the cloud is easier than ever. This is all thanks to technologies such as MongoDB Atlas, Blazor from Microsoft as part of their .NET, ASP.NET Core stack, and Azure App Services. I'm Luz Carter, Developer Advocate here at MongoDB, and in this video I'm going to take you through how you can get started creating a Blazor application using a cluster deployed on Azure in MongoDB Atlas, adding some test data to it, and then inside your Blazor application, accessing that data before deploying it to Azure App Service for access by anybody. So let's get started. In order to follow along with this tutorial, we're going to need a few prerequisites in place before we get started. The first is going to be .NET. I've got version 8 installed on my machine. But any version from .NET 6 late or later will do. You'll also need Visual Studio 2022. I'm using the Community Edition, but you can use another edition if you like. You can do this on Windows or Mac, but I will be using Visual Studio for Windows in this tutorial. Also, make sure that you've got the Azure Development Workload installed. If you already have Visual Studio, but aren't sure if you've got the Azure Development Workload installed as well, just open the Visual Studio Installer application, mo click Modify for your installation, and make sure that it is ticked. You'll also need a Microsoft Azure account and a free MongoDB Atlas account. As I said before, this whole tutorial can be followed completely free and you can find links in the description below for all the things that you're going to need to get started. So here we are in Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. Your list of obviously project templates will vary slightly, um, but what we're looking for is Blazor. Now, I've got .NET 8 installed, so there's this new template available called Web App, which kind of gives you the option to choose whether you want to do um, client-side, server-side, or auto. So if you've got .NET 6 or 7 installed for this, you might have to go back to the old-fashioned template, such as Blazor Server App. And that is what we're trying to achieve here. We are going to create a server app. So we're going to click Web App. We're going to click Next. We're going to give it a name, and it's entirely up to you where you choose to save it. Uh, we're going to call it Crypto News. <laughs> I'm just going to stick mine in the root of projects. I'm just going to get rid of this subfolder. I'm going to create a folder for it. So it's up to you whether you place a solution project in the same directory or not. Click Next. Now, if you're using .NET 8, you'll see this form here. If you use earlier versions, you'll see something slightly different. But of authentication type, we want none. We want HTTPS. Uh, we do not want to use top level statements. Uh, we don't want sample pages. And for the interactive render, render mode, so this is specifically for using .NET 8 and you select a web app. This is where we choose whether we want server, web assembly, or auto. In this case, we want server. And then we're just going to go ahead and click create. Now that the project's created, it's time for us to go ahead and add the MongoDB driver. We're going to be doing this with the Manage NuGet Packages UI, but you, of course, can also do this with the .NET CLI on other platforms if you're not using a lot of VS Windows. So we're going to go ahead and right-click. We're going to go to Manage NuGet Packages, and we're simply going to search for MongoDB.driver. Select it, click Install. Accept it, and there we go. Now that we've added the MongoDB driver to our Blazor application, it's time to go ahead and start to look at our Atlas cluster and what we're going to do with it. So there's a few things we need to make sure are in place first of all. So I've already got a cluster deployed here, but I'll share a link down in the video description to an article showing you how you can create your free Atlas account and your free M0 cluster. So I've got one here, you can see it's already M0. And then I've already, I've got it deployed to Azure. And if you do the same, you do need to make sure that your cluster is deployed to Azure as a cloud provider and not the default of AWS. This is because we are going to be hosting it on Azure App Service later. The other thing you need to make sure is that you go into network access and ensure that the IP address has access from anywhere, aka not dot not dot not not not. The reason for this is because we don't know what the IP address will be of the Azure App Service instance that hosts our website later on. 
And so it, we can just say access from anywhere so that our Azure App Service project will be able to access our database. Nice. Now that we have our cluster deployed on Azure, we can go ahead and start to add some test data to it. You could do this inside of the Atlas UI like I'm doing, or you could also do it inside of Compass, our free GUI tool, or even something like the VS Code extension. It's entirely up to you. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go into Browse Collections. And the first thing you'll notice is that we don't have any data yet. So it's going to give us the option to either load a sample data set, so MongoDB provides a bunch of really cool sample data of different shapes and sizes to give you an idea, but we're going to go ahead and click add my own data. This will give us the option to create a new database and a collection. So we're going to call it crypto news database, and then we're going to call the collection news. We don't need to do any additional preferences. Go ahead and click create. So that will give us this new collection here that we can use. So we'll go ahead and click insert document as a new document. And you have different views here. So you can click the curly brace if you prefer a JSON view. I like the default view of this hamburger menu because it gives you the ability to see the different data types you can add and type them in. So for here, we're going to give it a title field and we're going to say, I know Dogecoin is returning. I have no idea. Um, then we're going to add an additional field, and although title is fine to be a string, this next field we're going to make it date. And we're going to change it from string to date here, and then we're going to enter some data. So we're going to say 2024 to 14, because he doesn't like Valentine's Day, and then we're going to give it a time. So um, 10, 35, naught, naught. And then we're going to click, you know, you could put any time you wanted here. Obviously, programmatically, if you had a date field, you do something like new date. But just for the sake of this, we're just writing out the time here. Just in case you release more than one, you know, bit of news in a day and you want to be specific about the time. So go ahead and click insert. And there we have our test data there. If you want, you could add more than one document and just put some fake data and dates in here if you wish. But for now, we'll just start off with our one bit of news. Before we leave... Atlas and go back to our Blazor application to start making some changes to the code. We want to make a note of our connection string because we're going to need this later on to connect to our database from code and also add to app services. So if you go back to uh, database here on the left under deployment, you will see your cluster listed. And then if you connect the click the connect button, it will give you lots of different options of how you want to connect. So click drivers. Pick C sharp slash dot net from the drop down. You can leave the version number and then it will give you your connection string here in the, in section three. So go ahead and copy that. Obviously your username and password and everything will be different, but just make a note of it. And then later on when we use it, you'll just substitute this password value for your password. So you can even click the copy button here to copy it all, then close that. So here we are back in the Blazor project. And now that we have our Atlas cluster deployed on Azure and we've added some test data for our news website, we're going to actually add a page to view that news. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a new folder called models and then we're going to add a new class into it. The great thing about the MongoDB driver is it adds the ability to essentially just use plain old C sharp objects and it will then take care of converting those into your MongoDB document. So we're just going to create a simple class here. We're going to call it news because we need a way to represent our um, news items. So we're going to create one called news. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just add in a couple of using statements at the top from the MongoDB driver, just because we're going to add some attributes later on to our properties within this class. So the first one is going to be MongoDB.bson. And then we're also going to use within the BSON itself as well as we're going to do mongodb.bson.serialization.attributes. And you'll see in a second why we are going to, um, why we've added those using statements. So now we've got our class here ready to go. So we're going to add some properties. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create one called ID. Now this is going to be a special data type for the MongoDB driver called object ID. Because if you remember from adding our test data, object ID is a data type for our underscore ID field that gets randomly generated. And although we don't need to create them here, in terms of if we, create new, if we were to use the driver to create a new document, we wouldn't need to create one. It still needs to be able to map between them. 
So we're going to create one called ID and call it get and set. Now, this is the first time we're going to add one of those attributes, and which is why we've brought in that using statement. So we're going to add one called Beeson ID. So it's just to let the driver know that, hey, this property here is the one that we want to use as our Beeson ID. And then we're just going to add the other fields from our document, which was title and date. So the title is pretty straightforward. It's going to be public string title. But one thing you'll notice here is that title has a different casing to the field name in the document. And so what we can do is we can actually pass it an attribute called Beeson element that allows us to specify the name of the field that it maps to. So you might, for some reason, have it so that you have a completely different field name to what it maps to in your class here, unlikely. But the most common use case that we're doing here is for specifying when there is a different casing. So we're going to add another one for date now. And rather than being a string, this one is going to be a date time, which is part of C Sharp. But amazingly, the driver is able to take care of converting between that date time that we know how to work with and the date property type in our document. So great. That's our news model taken care of. Now we can start actually looking at how we're going to view this data. So if we go to components, you'll see that we've got some pages already. We're going to add a new page called news page but we're just going to um, create a razor component as the type. And in here, we're just going to type news page. Click add. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste some code. I will talk through it. And this code that I am pasting will be available to you as, as a link in the video description to a GitHub gist, along with the code that I wrote out there for the news class. So if you prefer to just copy and paste your code, it'll all be there on gist from the video description. So we're just going to paste this. So we're going to talk through it here. So it's going to be available at slash news. We're using the driver, BSON, and our models class and some other using statements. We're giving it a title and then we're saying if news is null, then generate a table with the news and date headings. And for each entry in our news, just display its title and date. And then we've got our code block here, which is common in Razor pages. And we've got a list of news. And then we're saying, well, when you create the page, go ahead and create a new MongoDB client. And before you run this for the first time, you will need to update this value here, get our database and our news collection, and then just ask it to get all the results. We don't want to do any filtering, so we just pass it a new document. Then we just say, hey, if, if there's loads of those results, just limit it to 10 and then convert it to a list. And now we will have all of our news available to use later on. I've pasted two more times. There we go. So we can save that. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video for a second while I enter in my uh, connection string because I don't want to give that away. But you go ahead and do the same. And then in a second, we will run our application and see our news being displayed. So now we've both added our connection strings. Let's go ahead and run the application and see what it looks like. So the first time it runs, it can take a few seconds to run, but that's OK. We can be patient. So there we go, our application is running, but you'll notice that we're not seeing what we expect here. That's because we created our news page to be available at slash news. If we go ahead and go to slash news, there we have it. No styling whatsoever, but we've accessorily returned our data from our MongoDB cluster with the C Sharp driver. Amazing. So we have everything connected. We've run our application and we've seen that we can get news back. Now it's time to deploy it and we're going to deploy to Azure App Service from right here inside Visual Studio 2022 for Windows. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right here on the app name, click publish. Now this isn't special to MongoDB specifically, this of course is Azure, but it just shows that it does work. So we can click next here, it will bring up your subscription. You should have one already based on the prerequisites, but if not, this window would give you the option to create one. So I'm going to use my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. I created a resource group, but you could always go ahead and do a different one. So we're going to click here, click finish. That'll go ahead and create the profile for us and deploy it. 
Now, of course, one of the things that we do here is that we publish it with our connection string inside the razor page code block. Of course, this isn't good practice in the real world. You'd want to use something like app settings and then take advantage of environment variables. And I will link a video in the description for this video where I show how to deploy a different type of app, I believe it's Mern Stack, to Azure App Service. Now, of course, that's a different type of application, but the way that you store your environment variables to access it from the application is all the same. So we'll just wait for that to go ahead and publish. And that should be ready now to publish. So we're going to click publish. So it's going to go ahead and think about deploying it. You'll see the different configuration settings here, and then we can go ahead and visit it just to see it running in the browser. So there we have it. It said publish exceeded, and it's gone ahead and opened our deployed website in a new window. So if we go ahead and visit news again, we will see our news being returned, just like when we ran it locally. Sweet. So there we have it. A full Blazor application using MongoDB Atlas, thanks to the C Sharp driver, deployed to Azure App Service, pulling down our test data and displaying it in our website. Why don't you get started today trying out the C Sharp driver in your Blazor applications, deploying them to Azure to take over the world? And if you've got any questions, visit our community forums where people are always ready and waiting to answer your questions and help you out. And as mentioned previously, all links useful to this video can be found in the video description. Happy coding!